Good afternoon, everyone. We are inside China Business. The Chinese government is calling on its manufacturing and industrial sectors to dramatically increase robotics technologies for mass production by 2025, that's next year, and to establish a new industry of humanoid robots by 2027. So today we're going to be talking about robots, but let's step back first and figure out how China takes over any industry they want. It doesn't matter if we're talking about small household appliances or shoes or car seats or cars. There's a series of steps that they take. Number one, the government declares that China's going to take over the industry and they establish specific dates, target dates, they establish funding at national and provincial levels. Then number two, they partner with existing firms that are already very competitive, premier firms in this industry. And they buy from them. They are buyers. Number three, they do knowledge and technology transfers and spillovers. Knowledge spillovers is what happens when companies in the same area are competing. Think Silicon Valley here. Now, there's a lot of spillover between Facebook and Amazon and Google, where all the companies know each other. They work nearby. Number four, China itself becomes the first big buyer, and they become what's called a first mover, where they are willing to be uh, the guinea pig, so to say, the, so to speak, the experimentation phase. They're happy to have that take place here in China. Number five they start to work on the raw materials sourcing part of the problem. They have vast overseas businesses and networks and they want to source raw materials to compete at the very top end of the supply chain here. Number six, Chinese factories begin to compete on cost to achieve scale in the global market. Then number seven, they start to compete on quality to achieve domination in the market. That is their procedure. That is how China takes over industries. This is their strategy for everything. The same strategy that they use to take over all the industries that we did not want anymore in the US or Europe because these jobs were hard work or dirty or low margin like textiles and chemicals and tires. That's how they did it in those industries. Now, of course, they're doing it in all the industries that we do want in Europe and in North America. Car manufacturing, heavy equipment manufacturing, computers, software, cancer drugs, pharmaceuticals, aircraft. So now today we're talking about them taking over humanoid robots. Tomorrow we'll be talking about space shuttles. We've seen this movie before. It's like Fast and Furious 12 or whatever we're up to now on the Fast and Furious movies. The actors are different, but it's the same story. It's the same script. And everyone is paying to watch it again. And the producers are going to make a billion dollars to do it again next year. Back to the robots then. In most respects, in most areas, China is already well on its way to dominating this industry like they do with most of the others. And they're doing so, again, using the same strategy that's worked for them already so many times. In 2022, China became the number one in a metric called robot density. Robot density is the ratio of installed industrial robots to industrial workers. In 2022, China's sales of industrial robots was over 50% of the entire global market. This is a comprehensive analysis that dropped uh, two weeks ago on 11 March. It's from a large think tank in Washington, DC called the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation. If you go to their about page, you see testimonials of their work from U.S. Senators, Representatives, Department of Defense officials. So they are well respected and well funded and their analysis does translate into actual policy and actual law. 
and it's a long report. We'll, we'll link to it so you can read it for yourself, uh, but we'll share the key bits here and discuss. So in 2022, 52% of all the industrial robots in the world were put in here in China. And the robot adoption rates in China are very surprising. They use another metric here called expected robot adoption rate. And this is a measurement that employs the relative cost of labor. This is very important. It's the most important thing. Why is China racing to develop a robotics industry to replace their own workers when their own workers are already the most productive in the world on a cost basis? especially compared to uh, workers in North America or Europe or Japan. And the reason, of course, is that the Chinese are not building these robots to replace their own workers. They want to build the robots to replace ours. In factory production, in manufacturing, the cost of labor is almost always the biggest input expense. So companies and countries with high labor costs, think of North America and Europe here, should be much more inclined to automate their labor. They should be much more motivated to replace their workforce with robotics wherever possible. But China is the world leader here. 12.5 times more robots adopted than would be expected given the cost of labor here in China. The US by contrast is only 70% on this scale. Experts are surprised at the United States we are not adding more robots given the cost of labor and benefit packages there. We'll come back to this point later, the question of why the Chinese are building so many robots when they are already the low-cost producer. What is the urgency for it here in China when in the United States it doesn't seem to be a priority at all? China's national and provincial governments are spending a lot of money to develop these robotics industries. And to understand why it's being driven by both Beijing and by the provincial governments, it's helpful to take a step back again and understand the role of industry clustering here in China. I'm here in Shandong province. Shandong is where most of the heavy industries are clustered, along with Hunan, which is next door. Heavy manufacturing like agriculture equipment, industrial equipment, construction, maritime equipment, trucks, trains, buses, those are all made here in this part of the country, in this part of China. So the robots needed to uh, automate factories that make bulldozers, for example, would be different from the robots needed to work in factories for electric vehicles, which would be down in Shanghai. And these are different still from the robots that would be required to do textiles or chemicals, which are in different parts of the country also. But the fact that this is being driven by Beijing down tells you that this is a national effort, irrespective of where the factories are or even what those factories build. They're going to build the robots that make buses here in Shandong, make the chemicals in Hubei, make the electric cars in Shanghai, make the electric scooters down in Guangzhou. How are they doing in this effort then so far? The Chinese are behind in robotics to Japanese and US companies for now. One of the tricky problems here is the software, I guess, software that runs the robots. But they are catching up and they are competing on price. The price point is driving their sales for now, and in this example, a Chinese humanoid robot is $90,000. And Western companies' models are five times that. So they're trading quality for price to achieve scale. The experts' assessments of where the Chinese are relative to everyone else and everything else, they are varied. But the inescapable conclusion here is that Whatever gaps do exist, the Chinese are catching up very quickly, just a matter of time. A fast follower, that's a phrase we see a lot in reports like this across different industries. And it means that the Chinese are following, but they're right behind. 
and they won't be following for very long. The central theme of this channel is supply chains and how comprehensively China is able to take over and monopolize the key supply chains. It doesn't matter what industry it is, no matter what industry we look at. When we start to go up the supply chain, we hit China somewhere. There's always a group of Chinese companies, a small group, and only Chinese companies that build a particular part or they perform a particular vital function, a particular process that is, <clears throat> that is imperative to the production of that product. Another feature is how industry leaders outside China don't realize that this has happened until it's too late to do anything about it. So, with respect to robots, it's not enough to build robots faster and better and cheaper than the Chinese, if that's even possible. We also need to have access to all the materials and the parts that go into building robots. The metals, the steel, the electronics, the soft materials, the refining, the glue, all that stuff. Otherwise, it's just a matter of time before Chinese companies squeeze out anyone else who's trying to build a robot. And again, I'm not making any wild predictions here. It, literally nobody should be surprised when they go to the movies to watch Fast and the Furious to see a car chase. It is the formula. But just watch. I know it. Here, in three years, we're going to be amazed and shocked that nobody else is able to build a robot anymore except the Chinese. Let's go back to this report one more time. So this think tank in Washington here did a great job of explaining the what and the how and the when of the Chinese plans in this industry. What they missed though is the why, and it is a big why. If China can have a monopoly on robots, they have a monopoly on everything the robots do. And it's not just factory jobs. Factory jobs are obvious. They're the low-hanging fruit. The factory work. Everybody knows it. But think longer term. Think of the service industries that robots can perform vital services in. Robots today can clean rooms and cook food and deliver things. That's right now. What about the future? Will robots be able to... Will they be able to grow food? Will they be able to pilot airplanes and drive ships, perform surgeries, land on the moon? If there is any commercial value in anything that robots can do, China's going to be making all the money. Thanks. Be good.